Welcome to Conversations with the Authors. Welcome back to Conversations with the Authors. I'm your host, Daniel Troop. And I'm Daryl. And I'm Sandra. These are the highly rated and uh, now award-dominated authors for How Nicholas Became Santa Claus. Also, Mom and Dad, uh, if you have been following this, you know. If you haven't, uh, surprise. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about ensembles. Basically, we're going to talk about, you know, in a non-research sort of manner, just sort of opinion-based, when it comes to writing and writing stories, what's the difference between sort of writing solo characters versus writing ensembles? And How Nicholas Became Santa Claus, if I'm not mistaken, is an ensemble story. I'd agree with that. Wouldn't yes, you? I would agree with yeah. that. And we've got many great ensemble stories. Star Wars, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Your stories have been likened to theirs. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so we're talking about um, ensembles and, you know, what what's best to write solo versus writing. You know, you know I, don't, I don't think it's a, a matter of what's best, I think. I think it, it I think it depends on the story that you're trying to tell. Yes. You know, if I'm trying to tell a story about about a, a you know two people, for instance, who who uh, fell overboard and were in the middle of the ocean, and the whole story is about them surviving, that's the story I want to tell. If I want to st- tell a story about uh, a ship going down and on the all the ensemble of people on that, like the Titanic, I'll tell that story. It depends on what you want to tell. So whether we're talking about solo or we're talking about ensembles, then it really just comes down to what, you know, your driving theme seems to be, you know, what drives the what, story uh, resonates. Yeah, you know, well, you any story has to resonate. Yes. I think it's more re- resonance has its place. But right. what we're talking about is the type of story you want to tell. Right. And if anybody remembers, and I, I guess I show my age with this, but... Uh, Charlton Heston made a movie in 1971. It was called The Omega Man. Yes. He was the last man on Earth. Yes, yes. That was a compelling story. And uh, the the whole world had been uh, eradicated by some biological event, a plague, you might say. And it shows his adventures in trying Mm -hmm. to survive and all all of uh, uh, the things that came up against him while he was trying to do that. The story was highly focused on him, and it could resonate with any one of us because to be alone and to be out there trying to survive on your own, I think is tremendous, tremendous stress, you know. And, yes, and, you know, yeah. we, we see stories like that. And, so, yeah. uh, the, uh, the popular story, it was, used to be on uh, NBC, I think it was called Last Man on Earth, where this man believed he was the only person left in this apocalyptic Scenario. Oh, you mean yeah, Will Forte, yes. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or or Castaway? Mm-hmm. Uh, where well, we Tom see, Hanks, yeah, Tom Hanks in, in uh, on an island. So and so, I suppose as long as the story is is you know I mean, compelling, it was compelling uh, you know, and it had resonance. And I think that that's I think the storytelling is the feature, yes. is the thing that we're interested in in conveying and getting across. And so that you identify with this character. Right, right. Uh, so I like ensembles. Yeah, I like know, ensembles and, and, too. And because you get to show various personality mm-hmm. traits mm-hmm. of the various uh, 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 characters uh, in, in the story. Yes. And yeah. uh, you have that interplay. Yes. And, you know, uh, that's, can, why, that's why I like the Avengers. Because uh, mm-hmm. you know, you've got all of these. And there are so many Avengers in the comic books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the movies, we've you know, a select few that we're sort of working with. And yet, we have all of these compelling stories. These, these threads, these uh, relationships, uh, these uh, friends yeah. and enemies that form. Mm-hmm. So the question then becomes... Uh, can you have too many characters in an ensemble uh, well, when you're telling a story? I, I think when it starts to look chaotic uh-huh. and and you're not telling any one story well right. and you don't see the character development and right. any one particular character so well, 
I mean, it's be, the story can be diluted. Yeah. But yeah. I think you can do it, and it's been done before. Well, I think also, um, and, and we've seen this in, said like, um, Star Trek Next Generation. We've seen, every once in a while, you'll see this sort of plot line that started, and then just either gets, it doesn't get finished, it gets buried, it gets lost. And I think that kind of happens with ensembles sometimes, is that you have all of these storylines that you start playing with, uh, and they start to sort of unfray. Well, that's that's with a bad. You can have yeah. bad writing right. anywhere. You know, you right. can have a bad ensemble, and, and, but you can have very good ensembles yes, too. Speaking of very good, you, you know, guys did a, a magnificent job with how Nicholas became Santa Claus. You have all you. of these thank you characters, you uh, and they work so well together. It's so enmeshed, and it's it, but it's also it doesn't feel forced. All of the relationships, uh, you know, the allies and adversaries that we see. Uh, in this story, uh, seems so genuine. And writing that into your story, was that difficult for you? No, well, you know, we talked about stories writing itself sometimes. You let, you let, the, you let the character and his traits, you let it unfold. Mm -hmm. You know, you let it unfold naturally. Mm -hmm. And so it, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like it's, you, you're being set upon. And uh, you get a natural evolution of, of the character yeah. in his particular yeah. story. It's like I mean, it was, you still run into difficult times, right? Yes, but they're not insurmountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it's like you were saying with the uh, Deep Blue movie, how uh, Samuel Jackson's character, uh, sorry for the spoilers, three, two, one, gets killed, and yet. Um, it it wasn't supposed to be that way. They just said, "Well, it feels like well, this should happen." And there, there were, we're talking about evolution and letting the story unfold, and it tells itself. So, and that that happens often. Okay, you know, because there's there's a, a natural progress to a story, just like there's a natural progress in what you're going to do next. Right. You know, the, these things are logical. Sometimes right. they're not so logical, right? And mm -hmm. that makes for an interesting story True. too. But but. In any event, the story and the character and the situation unfolds. Right. Well, when writing stories and writing these sort of freestyle events, uh, you know, and you let nature sort of take its course, there are times where we need to control nature. We do these controlled burns yeah. you know, to keep things from, you know, outgrowing. So at what point as a writer do you sort of make a control burn and stop letting the story drive itself and sort of redirect it? I, you know what? You got to be real careful with that, mm -hmm. you know, because that's that's the way the uh, they used to do it in Greek tragedies thousands of years ago. They had some, uh, you know, when they couldn't resolve a story, they had an ex machina. Oh, they had yeah. a god come down on a rope, yeah. and all of a sudden, the story's resolved yeah. and it's over with. Right. You know, that's not really right. modern writing these days. We don't, we don't, we try to stay away from that unless we're doing comedy. Yeah, and right. You, you don't want to <laughs> so, get it to a point where you don't resolve it mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just leave it hanging. And so, so what advice would you give authors who are just beginning their journeys uh, in sci-fi and fantasy and they want to write a story and they can't decide uh, whether they uh, are going to use a solo or an ensemble? And like you said, it depends, it depends on the, on the story It depends on the story tell. you want to tell. Is there, something, you know? is there anything else they should keep in mind also? Well, pick, pick your genre. Pick your idea that you mm -hmm. want to write in, go and get a bunch of authors mm -hmm. in that field, pick those that have an ensemble and those that don't. Well, you know what? It, it's as simple as, as knowing what story you want to mm -hmm. tell. Some guy probably got together and he said, you know what? I want to tell a story about this astronaut that gets, a, that gets a, a stranded on Mars. Yes. And that's a story. Right. And, and he wrote the story. And it was a good story, and and there there are other things. If if, if you remember the movie Her, for instance, you know, yes, right? Um, yeah. Even I mean, it was two characters, I guess. Well, that's but a, uh, look at um, and, Open oh, Water. Mm -hmm. Oh, what you about know. Moon? Yeah. Okay, Moon uh -huh. with uh, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. He was the only astronaut on the moon. Right. Now he played against uh, uh, his robot companions, right. you know, and the computer and 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 the rest of that. But it was a compelling story. You never knew what was going to happen. Right. And it was a solitary story. He was the main character, except for the machines. And uh, 
it it was it was written and, well, and of course, uh, mm-hmm. who can forget the Oscar-winning film uh, Gravity? Gravity, that's true. Sure, sure. Yep. Sandra Bullock, yes. You know, being stranded in space, uh, yes. and and uh, it it was a basically, it was about her her her, her, her striving to survive. Yes, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm something reminded of another movie. Was it was it Bradley Cooper? But say he sort of gets locked down in the, sort of the quantum dimension. I don't remember specifically what the title was, mm-hmm. uh, but I believe it was also an Oscar-nominated movie that year, or an Oscar-winning movie that year, perhaps. But uh, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I also enjoyed that. Too. And this this was, wasn't a solitary movie, but it was two characters mm-hmm. basically. And if anybody remembers uh, that the movie in uh, 2016, Passengers with Chris Pratt. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. When uh, they were going on to a, a, a 90-year journey yes. to uh, a, another system, and mm-hmm. that's where the people were going to offload and start a colony. And he got woke, yes. you know, uh, shortly into the trip. He had uh, He had 89 <laughs> more years to go. You know, and the story was about him and and how uh, he he tried to survive. Obviously, he he did uh, wake someone. You right. know, and then General there there Florence. was yeah, yeah General Florence, mm-hmm. and then there was that whole thing about that. Right. Okay. So. So. Okay. So you got obviously you've got you know whether we're talking about film or book, we've got screen time, right? We've got screen time with our our solo characters. Obviously, it's there. You have no mm-hmm. point. But what about with ensembles? Now, how do you manage who gets screen time? What is, you know, because you can either have too much or too little screen time with an ensemble. Well, you know what? Um, Look at uh, the Justice League, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We had one movie, what was it, Superman? Didn't show up till maybe half the film was over. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, Mm -hmm. how do you determine uh, who gets the screen time? Well, it, you determine by how the story is going, and what the story is meant to tell. Right, what, so. what What do you mean to tell the story? And so you know, it's it's not like you know some actor with a big name, and you're not giving me enough screen time. That's right. that's not what this is all about. This yeah. is about storytelling. It's, right? it's about it's that's always right. about the story. It's about the my point, outline right. tells me to do this, right. and my outline tells me to do that, right. and. This slide in my outline said that I need to do that to that outline. And, and, when, and, that, and when you did this outline, wow. when you constructed this outline, you had a you had an order, yes. a natural order right. that you'd follow. And when you start to imagine and start to write, your imagination takes you along and helps the story evolve. And it unfolds sometimes by itself. It's like adding ingredients to your recipes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with with a little leavening because yeah, it right. the, it changes. It becomes yes. instead of flat, right. uh, a flat outline. It becomes the characters become fleshed and things begin to fill out. So and sometimes and they fill out in in a natural uh, way. I think sometimes mm-hmm. if that's the type of story you're yeah, writing, it's an organic you know, it might fill out in yeah. a natural way too. But right. <laughs> but it fills out, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So what I what we need to remember, uh, as our as our authors are reminding us, is that uh, the story really is 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 driving uh, the characters and the plot mm-hmm. and everything. It's not it's not what character you like, what character you don't like, who you want to give screen time to. It's what drives the story. What's mm-hmm. important to the plot. What's important to yeah. uh, uh, the overall. Yeah, uh, and I I think. You know, it, it, just like you said, it's, it's not just because you like a character. I think that goes back to that other statement that you made about uh, I- engineering somehow uh, which way the story is going to go. Yeah. If you, if if the reader can see your thumbprint in the story, you you you've jumped out of the story. Yes, you know, you've taken mm. them away from that. You forced that. That's not good. Right. Okay. And ensembles are are are, are really uh, the the focus is is distributed across a number of people. The group and the character contributes to the narrative, and how that goes depends on what's necessary mm-hmm. to further that story along. So um, I I, I want to do a kind of a go back and do a little review, even though we're talking about. Ensembles, and we're talking about what drives the story. We 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 do inevitably talk about characters, 
And so our pro, so uh, some terms that some of our beginning authors may not understand. Uh, our protagonist is our good guy, so to speak. But that's not really the truth. That's not really true. Sometimes you can have a. Uh... You know, you uh, hear the word protag- pro, and you yeah, think, oh, well, you know, good, right, well, pro let, Let's right. look at the definition. A protagonist right. is the is the character that pushes the yes. for, uh, story forward. Now, your, your, your character, if he's the main character and he's the protagonist, they name that the hero. Yes. You know you can have a hero, but you can also have an right. anti-hero. Right. It doesn't have to be a good guy. Right. You know, and it sometimes to, the lead in your story might not be a good guy, right. but we identify him right. with him it's, and we follow him and he resonates right. with us, but he might not be the good guy. Right. We got okay. a lot of these and uh, we, we see antiheroes a lot in common mm-hmm. books. And these are sort of our heroes that don't fit the common mold of your Superman, Batman, you know, Green Arrow kind of heroes. These these are clearly the good guys. Well, look, look, Where, look what, what about too? What about that movie that was just out, Black right. Adam? Yeah, he wasn't a good guy. Right. All right, right, <laughs> right. He but, was an anti-hero. Right, <laughs> right. Um, uh, so your protagonist is is really it's just a fancy term really for your main character. Well, because no, boop, no. Boop, boop. protagonist is the person who moves the story along. Yes. The main right, character right. is the character through whose eyes we see the story. Yes. Okay. You know, it's like yes. To Kill a Mockingbird. The daughter, Scout, was the main character. Yes. You know, but her, her dad, the lawyer, he was he was the protagonist. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes, right. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That. You're right. Correct. Well, I'm the writer. Obviously, you're right. You're the, <laughs> you're the writer, yes. Oh. Point... Okay. Point match, yes. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a a a contagonist or an antagonist would be uh, the contagonist would be the sort of the character that sort of gets in the way and wants to or the obstacle character, I guess. You know, and 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 that's that's kind of a. a, a yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a coin a new term, yeah. Coin term mm-hmm. by uh, 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 some teachers of uh, 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 dramatics, mm-hmm. you know, dramatica specifically. Mm-hmm. Who coined the term a uh, contagonist? I think it's a useful term. Yes, and I, I, as they say, it's it's the, it's not an antagonist necessarily, and nor is it a protagonist, but it's the person who mm-hmm. kind of gets, like you said, gets in the way. Right. You know, uh, he may even slow down the progress of the protagonist because he's got his own agenda going. Right. You know, if if somebody needs a, a saving or if there's a financial crisis. And the protagonist is going to resolve that financial crisis. The antagonist would be the person that said, "Wait a minute, I got to get mine first. And he does everything he can to slow down the protagonist. And he is—he uh, is not the antagonist, right. but he's not doing the protagonist any good either. Right. <laughs> okay. but the antagonist—that's the sort of ultimate. That is the one who wants to stop what the protagonist wants right. to do. Right. He is the opposite. Now, you can have a contagonist with the antagonist, too, as well. Right. And okay. obviously, you have all of these characters. Yeah, so you, they've got their, their own, just like if you had, uh, like in The Godfather, if you got a, uh, the, uh, the Godfather, you might have somebody, some underling under right. him, mm-hmm. who is on the, supposed to be on the same page, mm-hmm. but he's, uh, he's going to get his first. Whatever the interest is of The Godfather getting his stuff done, the, the the contagonist is going to say, well, I'm going to slow this up a little because i got to get mine before this gets resolved. Because if he goes out and kills that guy, I won't get my money back. Right. So I'm going to kind of slow that down a little bit. And so. and you uh, you do, uh, obviously, these, all of these characters are in Nicholas, how Nicholas became Santa Claus. And all of these characters can be in an ensemble uh, of, a, of, a, of a book or a movie right. or what have you. Right. Um, and so uh, I thought it was probably a good idea maybe to clarify for our new writers, uh, you know, what these sort of terms might be. Uh, and you guys, you deserve that award that you guys uh, were nominated for because uh, the book is, is absolutely fantastic. And I appreciate all of the, so, the info. Her info story is so good. It <laughs> absolutely is. And so, I think another, another term we have to discuss is the story mind. Mm-hmm. Which is? The well, story mind. Do you want me to, or you want to? You do it. The story of mine is, is, is something that an author keeps in his own mind, but it's the universe that your characters live in. Ah. Uh, 
and, and so everything that makes their their thoughts, their actions, their interactions, their environment interact upon them is their universe or their the story mind. Uh, okay, whoa. so that's what one keeps in mind. It sounds kind of mystical when you think. One problem that can come up when you're you're doing a an ensemble is that each character has their own little story mind. Yeah, yeah they they do. They so it's like okay. it's like playing marbles, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you you have all your marbles in the pile, and that's the whole group together. That's your whole ensemble, and then somebody comes along with the big old cat, and right? And this is again, it, and they just go. knock all that apart. But you know what? Your characters are 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 people kind of you know yeah and they they have their own way of living their own, their own thoughts their own ambitions and their own failures and their own pride just like human beings in this world right and so, you know it's interesting you say that because just how we have we're governed by the laws of science and the universe and uh, you know a divine being perhaps if that is your philosophy uh, so too are the characters in the stories you write, and the mm-hmm. author is and kind of the deity of that you are story. The deity. Right. right, you are the one who designs the uh, methodology by which these creatures and characters uh, uh, live. We and, made their universe, yes. and mm-hmm. it's just, that it comprises the story mm-hmm. mind. And uh, if if you have a story in mind that you'd like to read, uh, I would suggest *A Nicholas Cage Santa Claus*. And you can check that out at our website at www.troopbooks.com. You can check out our Facebook page at troopbooks.com, our TikTok, our Instagram, at troopbooks. And of course, as always, we want to issue a great thanks to Alexander Nakarada, who uh, composed our music, because that's always in my mind. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on Conversations with the Author.